Are you a woman searching for purpose and success? A housewife? Maybe a single mother? You're in the right place. Welcome to Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles. Activate, motivate, inspire. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. I am Miss Lisa Nobles, your host, and I am so excited and elated to have you joining with me today. Speaking of today, our topic consists of helping women to discover define and live their truth. I have a very important guest joining me today for this special empowerment segment at the Savvy Speaks Roundtable. This segment is dedicated to explaining how to help women discover, define, and live their truth. Here our guest shares passion. She shares perseverance and how one can regain their personal power so let's give a warm welcome to our guest queen Lakeisha Woodard who is our who is a sister coach which she will tell us more about that here in a second she's a survivor she's a speaker as well as an author welcome Lakeisha to the Savvy Speaks Roundtable family our focus yes our focus again today is helping women to discover define and live their truth with miss lakeisha woodard welcome again queen let's t- let's hear a little <laughs> bit more about yourself go right ahead <laughs> tell us a little bit All about right. yourself <laughs> sure sure thank you so much for having me i'm super excited thank so, you as you said my name is lakeisha woodard and i am a speaker i'm an author and i'm also a super coach and also the founder of a sister's truth and through a sister's truth, a sister's truth, I help women to discover, define, and live their truth for manifesting a courageous life without yes. limit. Mm-hmm. And as a sister coach, it is my job to make sure that my clients have the tools and encouragement needed to stay true to themselves so they mm-hmm. can live their purpose-driven life. Yes. Now, what sets me apart from other life coaches is that I share my personal experiences mm-hmm. with my client because like sisters we're linked by our common life experiences yes and i truly believe that it's our testimonies that we need to share in order Mm -hmm. to help our fellow sister lean harder on her faith so she can reach her breakthrough so that's what i do with my business awesome i love that family i hope that you're excited because i am excited (laughs) about this testimony that we're going to hear about today this journey all right again are you ready family then let's talk about it helping women to discover define and live their truth with miss lakeisha woodard all right family let's jump right in i want to begin right here because i as i was researching this sister coach here this queen she had something on her website that really tuned in, it honed in, and it is a very relatable quote that I want to start off sharing with the audience, and then we will go in a little bit into her history afterwards. But you share, Lakeisha, my journey to purpose has been a long, hard road. I know how it feels to reach every milestone, achieve every goal, and beat every odd and still feel empty and confused. You have no idea why because you have surpassed every expectation and living a good life, family. So why now is there confusion and emptiness? As Lakeisha continues, the answer is really simple. You are not living your truth. How powerful is that, family? Can you share a little bit more about this concept here, Lakeisha? Sure, sure. Absolutely. Um I do throughout my journey, we'll talk more about that obviously. Right. But throughout my journey I had to really become self aware of who I of who I really am. Yes. And in order to do that I had to discover, define and then also live my truth. Right. And this was a really, really long hard journey for me because mm-hmm. like I said, I beat every single eye. Right. Yes. Because there were so many things stacked against me. But right. I used those things that were stacked against me and use it as my my motivation to continue forward. Right. I'm the oldest of all my sisters and brothers. And in right. all I have thirteen sisters and brothers. Oh my so goodness. So growing up in the yeah, so growing up in the projects of Chicago, we didn't have, you know, an example to look up to. Right. When you growing up on welfare in the projects and you walk outside your door and there's you know, drug dealers, gang right. prostitution, and all these things going on, you just don't 
you know, you don't see any positivity. Right. So I took it upon myself to be that example that my brothers and sisters needed to see so yes. they can know that there was something better than the current circumstances that we were living in. Right. So I went to, you know, I graduated from high school. I went to college. I went on to go to law school. And yes. I'm doing all these things that my parents never done. And I get to the point where it's just like, okay, so now what do I do? Right. You know, I felt empty because I realized for myself that I wasn't truly living in my purpose. Like the right. calling that God placed on my life, you know, I wasn't living to fulfill that purpose. Right. And so once I, I, I realized that, that's when I, you know, had to do some inner deep work mm -hmm. to really just embrace what my purpose is. Right. And that's where my life changed. I love that. Everyone needs to experience a change in life. But what I really mm -hmm. can appreciate about you is how we're mm -hmm. stepping forward and you're telling people or you're sharing with your community that you have mm -hmm. to discover how to live your truth. So what led mm -hmm. you, what else led you to discovering your ugly truth? You spoke specifically about, um, in the research about your ugly, one defining their ugly truth, finding their ugly truth what is that about well let me start by saying that um i don't want to say my truth is ugly because my truth right. is beautiful right so discovering your truth means to become aware of who you truly are right that's the person god created you to be mm -hmm. not the person your mom and dad wants you to be mm -hmm. not the person society says is cool to be and definitely not that person who is defeated by them by their circumstances right god created us in his own image so mm -hmm. with that belief, my truth is beautiful. So now right. for me to get to the get to this understanding, mm -hmm. this healing and seeking a relationship with God. And once I was on my healing journey and started yes. shedding these layers, Lisa, I had to shed some layers that was the yes. person the real me. Yes. You know? And and once I started to get a glimpse of who she was you know, I'm like, okay, I need to know more. <laughs> yes. Of these kids. Yes. You know, I'm starting to like this person. So the woman God created me to ultimately be yes. is what really led me on my journey to discovering my truth. I yeah. love that. And would you say mm -hmm. shedding when you when you talk about you had to shed, you had to shed mm -hmm. those layers. Was that an mm -hmm. easy transition for you? No, ma'am, it was not an easy transition because anytime you have to look trauma mm -hmm. in the face, mm -hmm. it's, it's always it's always a hard thing to do. But it's right. worth it though. Right. It's worth it. It's right. worth the pain. It's worth the struggle. Mm -hmm. But once you start to see your potential, yes. the power that's behind you, yes. that's what's gonna get you through it. Yes, I love that. Now you talk about seeing your potential mm -hmm. and the power that's behind you. Do you mm -hmm. think that sometimes when people are in invested in their in their in their denial of their truth, maybe if you will, that they can't see their power? Is that what blinds us to seeing our potential? Is that we are actually in that moment of our hurts and our pains and our our trials and our tribulations? Absolutely, absolutely, and you know. At the beginning of my journey, mm -hmm. the first thing I, I needed to do was, Lisa, was I needed to embrace change. That was yes. the first thing I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I had to embrace change as it related to people, places, and things. Yes. Now, I had to change the type of people that I hung around, right? right? Because at that time, at the beginning of my journey, I was hanging around people who were involved in at-risk behavior. Right. And smoking weed, not going to school, and things like that. Right. So I needed to change the type of people that I was hanging around. And of then course. I needed to change my environment. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I needed to leave Chicago. Because yes. if, as long as I was in Chicago, as long as I had access to get back to you know mm -hmm. my city where yes. my people were, that yes. I was never going to be able to grow. Right. And then I had to change my thoughts and my thought processes. Yes. Because I had to literally stop punishing everybody yes. for what my stepfather did. Come on. Because it got, to a, it, it got to the point, you know, where I was just 
blaming everybody for what he did. And you right. know, yes, we live in a cool world, but there really are some good people in this world. Right. Yes, <laughs> I love you this. Listen to two people right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when we are in the midst of our disaster, when we're in the midst of our trauma, you know, yes. it's, it's hard to see past that. Right. Right. And mm-hmm. see the good of people. That, I, I love that. I love that. So when you you spoke a little bit about your stepfather, which leads me into mm-hmm. my next questioning, of course. How mm-hmm. did you overcome that sexual abuse after eight years? What was that like for you? Well, it started with... <laughs> an Mm -hmm. ad in a college newspaper Mm -hmm. because the ad was asking for volunteers for a nonprofit organization called Youthful Survivors. Yes. Now, Youthful Survivors consisted of college students who spoke about different at-risk behaviors that they Mm -hmm. um, had gone through. And we would go to different schools, elementary Mm -hmm. schools, middle schools. We even talked at churches and different companies just talking about what we experienced. Mm -hmm. So I spoke about being sexually abused by my stepfather for eight years. Right. And let me tell you, Lisa, my very first speaking engagement, yes. I went 20 minutes over my allotted time. Okay? Yes. Come on, girl. <laughs> I, went, <laughs> I went 20 minutes over my time. You know, mm-hmm. that was my first time really just speaking out loud about yes. the sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. And the founder of the, um, the nonprofit, she told me afterwards, she was like, you know what? Even though you went over your time, I'll let you speak. Because yes. I can tell you needed to get it out. Mm-hmm. And so after that speaking engagement, you know, at the corners of her heart, right? Out of yes. her own pocket, she paid for me to go through therapy. And wow. that's how I began my healing journey was because somebody mm-hmm. took a chance on me and said, for I love that. Now, mm-hmm. now I, just ta- I just talked about earlier how I need to change my mindset. Yes. Now, I couldn't look at this woman as if she was just out, like, would you want to get out of this or whatever? Of course. But I had mm-hmm. to change my mindset and, you know, and not, like I said, treat people based off of what my stepfather did to me. Yes. And so I accepted her offer and went to therapy, and that was, like, the best thing I could have ever done. I love that. Now, when you Mm -hmm. were in that situation, which a lot of women, Mm -hmm. you know, we have the Me Too movement, and I know this is Mm -hmm. not specifically with it, but it's still relatable. It's still the same history. It's the same occurrence. When you were Mm -hmm. going through that, did you not have any family support? And and I understand your history of, you know, in the projects and different, you know, Mm -hmm. family systems. You know, I I lived in the projects, you know. So, Mm -hmm. uh, what how did you what what kept you strong during that time eight years is an awful long time eight years is a long time um and to answer your question no i didn't have support you know i told my mom several times that the abuse was going on and for whatever reason she didn't believe me right so afterwards i just kind of went into i guess like survival mode because what do you do you adapt to the situation that you're in in order to survive so you know during that time it started when i was eight years old okay started so Mm -hmm. from from eight to the age of of 16 Mm -hmm. now my mom started dating my stepfather right after my my grandmother passed away Mm -hmm. and so when my grandmother passed away um i felt like that's when my life just in this downward spiral right (laughs) you know um but it was it was my my grandmother mm-hmm. that was rooted in a church. Yes, and so she would take me to church, and my grandmother did have me baptized, but you know before I was eight years old. Right. So what? So what? What? What held me together mm-hmm. was God. Yes. Because the little bit that I knew. Mm-hmm. What, let me tell you something. What? what Come on, girl. All you need is the faith the size of a mustard seed. Yes. Yes. That's all you need. Lisa, yes. that's all I had mm-hmm. was faith the size of, the, of a mustard seed. Yes. I didn't know why I was going through it. I didn't know if I was going to get out on the other side. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Yes. There was plenty of times that I laid in my bed crying and, 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 and just shouting and, and being mad at God. Right. But there was still an ounce of faith there. Yes. And it wasn't until I was going through my, my healing journey that I realized that he was always there with me. Yes. I love he was that. Always there with me. 
So would mm-hmm. you say, even though you, you came to a point where you realized and you look back, oh, that was so transformative. <clears throat> and you, as you said, that you, that God was always there with you. Were these the mm-hmm. beginning stages of finding your truth? Was this the beginning stages of recognizing your voice? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, after suffering a trauma for eight years on top of living in a project where I saw Chicago, abandoned by my biological father, born to a teenage mother, living on on welfare in Mm -hmm. a household with a drug addicted pedophile. (laughs) Come on. Uh You know, I was literally born a statistic. Literally, and yes. that was based on society's opinion, you know, uh, because of my circumstances. Yes. And shoot, I was doomed. I was doomed to follow either my mom's footsteps or even worse. So there was a lot of emotional barriers that I needed right. to break through, mm-hmm. and that was that was definitely the beginning stages. Oh, I love that. Here, would you? recommend to our listeners what they would do just in this stage because some of us think that we have a trying time we are going through something horrific and then you hear someone else's story to let you kind of know that maybe you know we're you know maybe there is a way out what would you say just at this point to that person who is going through something so horrific on this same level of what, how would they find hope in that situation? Get help. Mm-hmm. Continue to speak up. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I spoke out about my sexual abuse over and over again. Yes. Um, over the, the eight year time frame, And then, right. you know, at some point I, I just stopped speaking right. about it because I felt like it would never change. You know, right. eight years is a long time, a long time, you know, but, but we, we, we have to never give up. We have yes. to never give up. We have to keep seeking help. We have to keep, you know, reaching out and 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 just being and just being open. And I say that because the reason why the sexual abuse ended, Lisa, is mm-hmm. because I, I got a job at the age of sixteen. I was working in a nursing home, right, in the kitchen at a, at a nursing home. And so one particular day. My stepfather and my mom was taking me to work this particular dad. I don't know why. And they were talking about moving. Mm-hmm. He wanted to leave Chicago and move to, I think it was Kentucky. And so they're having this conversation. And, you know, and my mom is, is, is like going with it and, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. contemplating leaving with this dude. Right. And so I go into work. I hold it together in the car and I go into work. And Lisa, I just, but I start crying. Yes. I was you crying can't take so it anymore. I was, yeah. yeah, I was literally shaken. And this yes. is why I said, don't give up, keep speaking up. Because yes. when I, w- I was so visually upset yes. that my boss took me into her office and sat me down and said, what's wrong with you? Like, like what's going on? Because obviously there's something really upsetting to you. Right. The reason why I say, no matter what, keep speaking up, keep mm-hmm. speaking help, it's yes. because I told her what was going on. Like yes. it all just fell out of my mouth. Of I course. Not said anything. Yes. Because I had, you know, told my mom, you know, plenty of times and nothing had ever happened. Yes. Like, but this particular time somebody asked me and I told her. Thank you, God. And the mm. first thing she did was pick up the phone and call her husband, who was an an attorney. Come on, girl. And asked him, what should she do? And he said Get that girl to the police station. Yes. My life was changed at that moment. My God. Mm, mm, now, what mm. if I would never would have said anything? So no matter what it is that you're going through, Come you on. have to get help. Yes. You don't, don't ever give up. Because I could have given up on myself and not said anything. There's no telling where I would be. Right. You know, if I never would have said anything at that moment. Because up mm-hmm. until that moment, everybody had let me down. Come on, girl. I felt like, Everybody had let me down. Yes. So who who am I to believe this woman was going to help me out? Come on, girl. I and agree. I took a chance. Mm-hmm. We cannot stay silent. 
We cannot mm-hmm. say Jalen. Mm-hmm. Not at all. I, not at all. I love your passion. Like, I am feeling your story. I, I love your passion. I know that our audience mm-hmm. will be able to feel what you're saying because so many times we go silent because we think that's yes. the right thing to do. But that's where mm-hmm. the abuse and the hurt continues. Mm-hmm. And that is how mm-hmm. people, family, I really want someone mm-hmm. to hear this. I really want you to feel Lakeisha's passion because that's how the the abuse continues it may not be Mm -hmm. physical it may be emotional but until Mm -hmm. you deal Mm -hmm. with that abuse and keep Mm -hmm. trying you will continue to be hurt so how did you find Mm -hmm. your passion for empowering women into personal development I know that I really kind of want to say right there you know I really feel like because I really feel that when someone hears this it is going to be so relatable it's almost hard for me to transition into the next thing but if you are hurt or you are destitute in this type of I don't care if you are a woman who is in an abusive relationship with Uh your husband I need you to understand the relevance and the significance Uh of getting Uh and seeking help if no one Uh listens to you you keep finding you pray to God Uh to find that Uh person who will listen Uh to you family I am passionate Mm -hmm. about that because I am a survivor of domestic abuse and Mm. sexual abuse as well but I want to keep going on because this is about Lakeisha and her story but at the same time please keep continuing to seek help so back on to transitioning to our next (laughs) question how did you find your passion for empowering women into personal development um, sis (laughs) I'm sorry sis (laughs) I had a moment no worries Mm -hmm. no worries and, and that moment, that that moment was needed so, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. We, we just never know what somebody is going through at the time that they're listening exactly. to, this, to this podcast. So mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I, it's, it's okay to take as many moments as, as we need. Right. But um, to answer your question, my passion really started with empowering children. Okay. You know who were mm-hmm. who were victims to come forward. You know that that very first first speaking, speaking engagements I was talking to you about. Where I yes, went yes. Over mm-hmm. on my speaking time. Mm-hmm. Well, after that particular engagement, a young girl came up to me afterwards and told me that she may be pregnant by her mother's boyfriend. Okay. She was a middle schooler at the time. Wow. This was at a middle school. Right. So of course, I reported it, and you know, immediately, and she was removed from the home, and mm-hmm. thankfully, she was not pregnant. But from mm-hmm. that day forth, it became very important for me to tell my story. Yes, very important because I realized yes. for the first time that I wasn't alone, mm-hmm. and I can help people just by mm-hmm. sharing my story. Yes. So throughout my matriculation at Clark Atlanta, I volunteered with this group, share my story. Mm-hmm. Now fast forward. To work in corporate America, I turned into that person that people would come to because they found me easy to to talk to, yes. you know, and to like tell their business or whatever. So, right. Um, women would talk to me, and I would give them advice, and I would also share my story of how I survived sexual abuse and how I didn't didn't let that hold me back because right. my motto was if I can survive sexual abuse. And the Chicago Housing Project. Right. Whatever it is you're going through at that moment, you, <laughs> yes. can, survive that. you <laughs> can survive that. You can survive you that. You can survive that. So, mm-hmm. so once again, I started sharing my story more and more and more and realized that the majority of women was just, that I was talking to just needed to gain some self-awareness. Yes. Because clarity on who you truly are. Yes. What you're truly capable of and the power that's behind you Come on. will take you a mighty long way. I love that. Long way. I love that. So mm-hmm. how can a person find their voice in this particular situation or any situation in life? How how do you recommend that someone would find mm-hmm. their voice? Okay. Well, it's very important for all of us to find our voice so we can know our place in this world. Yes. Um, each of us was blessed with a calling in order to be blessed and be a blessing to someone else. And in order to fulfill your calling, Mm -hmm. you must find your voice. And finding your voice means to embrace our authenticity. Mm -hmm. And there are three phases that we must journey through to find our voice. And those phases are discover, define, and live your truth. So discover your truth means to become aware of your true self. Define Mm -hmm. your truth means to identify what gives your life 
meaning that's mm-hmm. your purpose mm-hmm. and then live your truth means to have the courage to embrace all aspects of who you are and yes. present that person to the world because yes. once we clear about our truth then we can live you know a a courageous life yes. by discovering our voice based on who we are living our purpose and releasing others' expectations on our life. Yes, I love that. And would that be still relatable, or is that a part of one unmasking their truth as well, Lakeisha? Um. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, our our, our truth is tied to our authenticity. We're right. all wonderfully and fearfully made. Yes. And in order for our voice, in order. For for us to find our voice, we must know our truth. Yes. So the inner work is done through the through those three phases that I just talked about. Right. You know, discover, define, and live their truth. Right. Now, let me just be clear: these okay. phases are not just something that I made up just because they sound good right. and roll, you know, pretty nicely off the tongue. Right. I literally, you know, sat down and evaluated and analyzed my journey to purpose, and I realized that you know there were certain not necessarily milestones, but mm-hmm. um, defining moments mm-hmm. that I had in my life that kind of shifted me in a new direction. And it was at these particular defining moments that I, you know, created these three phases because I'm mm-hmm. like, if we just know who we are, right? if we just have, you know, the courage to just embrace our purpose, yes, we can live a life without limits for sure. I love that. I love that. So when we're living yeah. our life without purpose and we're we're unmasking our truth and we're finding who we are, what is hindering us from being who we need to be, why is mm-hmm. it important to embrace th- that difference that we discover? Well, number one, because God took his precious time and mm-hmm. intimate details to create us yes. before we were to form in our mother's womb, okay? Right. So mm-hmm. we need to get excited about that. Yes. And know that God <laughs> doesn't waste his time. Okay? Yes. Okay. So you are, you are not a waste of time. I'm not a waste of time. Right. And there's a specific assignment that only Lisa can deliver, that only right. Keisha can deliver, that we must do. And number two, embracing our difference is so important because it's our difference that other women find courage. Yes. It's in our difference that we have strength and resilience. Mm-hmm. And when you're not afraid of being who you are and walking in your truth, you're setting an example Come on, other women mm-hmm. who have no idea of what being authentic looks like. You better say you're that. You're that example. I love that. I love that. I want you to kind of, if you can, just real quickly expound a little bit about when you embrace your truth and you're walking in your mm-hmm. truth, you're setting that mm-hmm. example. I, I really want mm-hmm. you to talk about that just a, just real mm-hmm. briefly because I think sometimes we become afraid. Can you can you speak uh, to that? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, living in your truth, mm-hmm. embracing your difference, that is the scariest most freeing thing that we can do. Yes. And I say scary and most freeing because mm-hmm. once we say this is who I truly am, mm-hmm. take me as I am, world, accept me for who I am, Come we on. are literally opening the door for people to judge us, for people to hey, rescue us. Mm-hmm. And the last time I checked, nobody mm-hmm. wakes up in the morning with the goal to be judged for the day. Come on. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Mm-hmm. So what do we do? We put on this mask. Come on, girl. And we shy away from who we really are because we don't want the spotlight on us. Yes. We don't want people to throw their judgments and opinions on us. Right. So we hide and we and we play, you know, we follow um follow everybody else and, and we uh you know, we're just normal. Right. 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 We, right. We're just we follow what what we think society says we should be right and, and that's the worst thing that we that's the worst thing that we can do but when we are living it in our truth we are li- literally being an example for somebody else because yes think about it if we're all wearing masks mm-hmm. we're not sure how not to wear a mask come on girl because when you you never know who's watching you my mm-hmm. whole journey started because i wanted to be an example for my sisters and brothers i wanted them to see yes. what success can possibly look like for them because everything around us 
spell disaster. Yes. So if you yes. don't if you don't know better, how can you do better? Come on. So it's our it's 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 up to us to be that example that mm-hmm. we need. You know, I was when I first started my business, if you don't mind if I tell you a short story. No, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. When I first started my business, you know, I was so afraid. I was on my way to uh, a networking event and mm-hmm. I was stuck in traffic. In Houston, going downtown, stuck in traffic. Yes. And so I was literally talking myself out of going to this networking event. Yes. This was my first time holding myself out as the founder of A Sister's True. Come on. And at this time, you know, I had just started. So, you know, I, I hadn't had everything, you know, my vision, mission statement. I hadn't had all that in place right. yet. Mm-hmm. And so I'm literally talking myself out of going, and I get a phone call. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and on the other end was somebody who had been watching me Come on, over girl. the years, mm-hmm. who knew my story of how I was able to survive sexual abuse, go to school, go to law school, and do all these all these things yes. that I did. And she was calling me because, in tears, Lisa, she was calling me because she wanted to let me know that she had finally landed a job that yes. was in her, the career field that she wanted to be in so she mm-hmm. could support her family. And she said she wanted me to know because she looked to me Come on, girl. for strength mm-hmm. and the motivation she needed to get the degree that she needed to mm-hmm. land a job that was going to support her family. See, And she was calling to thank me. So what if I didn't embrace my difference? What right. if I didn't live on my truth? Right. Right? She never would even... I, I was just trying to help out my brothers and sisters. Yes. I, you know, blood brothers and sisters. And I ended up helping somebody out that I didn't even know I was supposed to help out. Yes. hmm Right? Right. So, I went to that networking event. I went to that networking Yes. Event. I mm-hmm. was like, God, thank you. That was the confirmation that I needed. Yes. To yes. let me know that I'm on the right track. I love that. I love that. It's important that God, you know, I, my godmother and I have, we, we have this little saying that God sends us little notes. Uh-huh. And when things yeah. like that happen, that's what it puts me yeah. in mind of. And I like to share with people, yep. God sent you a little uh-huh. note, meaning that he uh-huh. communicates through other people to show you, give you that confirmation uh-huh. that baby, I'm still here. Here's a little confirmation. Yep. Here's a little note to let you know that your daddy, God in heaven is still watching your back. So why is it important? Yeah. Yes. For one to fall in love and embrace their flaws and their imperfections Lakeisha it's um it's important because it's literally less ammunition the enemy has to attack your mindset yes over half the things we're afraid of doing Mm -hmm. from an ounce of belief that we're not worthy we're less Mm -hmm. than we're capable of because we don't have what the next person has right but if we were to just embrace our flaws and imperfections then we're less likely to compare ourselves to someone else Come even, on. You know, more room, more energy for us to love ourselves mm-hmm. and focus on what we're created to do. Yes. I love that. And now you share real quickly, you share that we need to focus on what we're created to do. Do you think that sometimes that even in that moment when we find what we're created to do, that fear was set in and cause us to procrastinate and then we we miss out on our blessings in that way because we're not walking in our truth or we're not embracing that maybe God does want you to be successful so within that mm-hmm. we still become afraid what what is your insight on that mm-hmm. yeah it fear <laughs> yeah that's fear I tell yes. you <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. fear mm-hmm. will mess up your fear will mess up your whole day if you if you let it. Right. But, um, yes, fear will kick in and stop us from really, you know, embracing, embracing our purpose. But right. we just have to, we just have to push forward, you know, because when we're walking in our, you know, walking in our truth and we know what our, our purpose is, mm-hmm. that's going to be hard. That, it's not going to get easy. Right. Because once the enemy, you know, sees that you're on the right path, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, the bull's eye on your back is going to get bigger. I, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. You're it's, right. It's, it's, you know, you're right. it's, it's mm-hmm. going to get bigger, mm-hmm. you know, but you just got to continue to have faith and continue to know that everything that you that you need to be successful to to, to fulfill that purpose is mm-hmm. already in you. You have everything that you already need, Come on. you Come know, on. to fulfill that purpose. Mm-hmm. And this is another reason why I like to share my stories too, because you know, 
I truly believe there's, uh, you know, the saying that there's nothing new up under the sun. Right. And I truly believe that that also relates to the enemy's tactics. Right. So whatever tactic he, you know, uses on me to try to still kill and destroy my jaw are the same yes. tactics that he's going to use on you. Of so course. it's important for us to share our stories of, you know, struggles and triumphs and on yes. to someone else. Because when you in the midst of it, you tend to think that you're alone and nobody knows what you're going through. Come and on, girl. That's from the case. Mm-hmm. It's so far from the case. But if we're not talking to each other, if we're not sharing, how would that next sister know? Yes. How would she know so she can just, you know, lean a little harder on her face so she can reach right. a breakthrough? I love that. So before we get to our final thoughts, I want to ask you about this. What does it mean for one to realize one's greatest potential? Because I think sometimes even we've talked about fear, we've discussed so much, but then what does it mean for one to realize their greatest potential? How can they do that after all of this? Um, what it means to realize one's greatest potential? One word. Okay. Freedom. I love it. Freedom. Freedom from others' expectations or how you should live your life. Mm-hmm. Freedom from the trauma that's holding you back. Come on, girl. Freedom to live a life without limits because you're walking in your truth, being mm-hmm. the person God created you to be. Mm-hmm. Freedom to make the decisions based on your truth, not yes. caring about the potential backlash that it can yes. cause. Mm-hmm. Because it is a sad fact that someone will get jealous and highly upset, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because you have the courage to be authentic and live authentically. Come but the on. real, you know, issue behind that, mm-hmm. the real issue behind that jealousy is that that person just hasn't figured it out yet. Yes. How to live authentic- authentically for themselves. Yes. So freedom. Freedom. I love that. Family, I hope you've been taking notes because we need freedom. You need emotional freedom. I I think what you're saying, Lakeisha, is so intimate because we we can become a prisoner to our own thinking. And especially we can become captives to what other people think. Now, I want to I want to invite Lakeisha to share her final thoughts. And, And and this is very interesting. What are some easy, actionable tips to that give us a brief synopsis of everything that we talked about today, everything you discussed, especially about your program, for our listeners to do after this interview? Because some of us, we can get that information, but we don't have the actionable steps of how we take mm-hmm. actions on everything that you said. Share with us in, in about a minute to two uh, what mm-hmm. the, our listeners can do to take action on, on this, uh, on, on finding and discovering their purpose. Okay. Well, um, first off, you must get clarity. Yes, you know, and that starts with discovering your truth. And one mm-hmm. of the best tips I can give is to just literally sit down and get to know yourself. I and love if that, that means doing something, yeah. And if that means doing something as simple as writing out your likes, six likes, values, strengths, weaknesses, then do that because mm-hmm. you'll be surprised how many people who have no idea what they like to do. Right. Something as simple as that. Now, getting clarity also means defining your truth so you can narrow in on what your purpose, you know, what your purpose is. And a great tip is to just simply start by paying attention to what people are always asking you to do. Because okay. everyone in your circle is asking you because you do that thing better than anyone else mm-hmm. they know. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, a part of my story is too that I like to share is that um for a long time I was on the path to become an attorney and I did go to law school. Right. But after my first year of law school, I decided not to go back because I lost the desire for law school. Right. Now I was confused by this because of my whole life that was the goal. So I didn't have a plan B. I didn't have a plan C. Right. But when I did the inner work I mm-hmm. realized that I was becoming a lawyer because mm-hmm. my because of my mom. My mom right. loved Perry Mason growing up. So yes. being an attorney is how I was trying to get my mom to love me as a child. So I like cause that. Because in, in a child's mind, if she loved me just you know just a little bit more, of course, just stop this man from abusing me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I wasn't. I wasn't on the right path, even though that particular path didn't lead me to destruction, thank God, thank you know, God. but it still wasn't, it still wasn't a purpose that God had for me. But the thing that was consistent all, all throughout my journey of me, you know, 
trying to become a lawyer. The one thing yes. that was consistent was me sharing my story and encouraging other people. Yes. That was the consistent thing. So once I, you know, I got to a place where I started to do the inner work. Yes. You know, I had to realize that. And that's when I got on the path of sister coaching and, you know, and a sister's truth. So that's why I say that there, what is that thing that people are asking you for? Like, what is right. that thing that you do better than anybody else? You know, and sometimes it's not glamorous. And, you know, and that thing that you're so good at, it's not hard for you to do. And right. we tend to discredit it. Right, yes. because it doesn't look like somebody else's talent. It doesn't right. look like Beyonce singing. Of like, course, that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, deep dive into that and give your talent that chance to blossom. Yes. And the last and there I say most important tip is what we've been talking about is to embrace your difference because yes. these days we have instant access to other people's lives. Amen. Right, or the mm-hmm. or the life they want us to see. Yes, that spreads a disease called comparison. Yes. You know, I have a I have a mentor that says all the time that comparison is a, is a thief of joy. Yes. We have to embrace our own imperfections in order to fully love ourselves. Yes. Because the more we love ourselves, the louder our voice gets and yes. the more confident we become. Yes. So honestly, whatever imperfection that you have, there's someone in this world that sees it as a perfection. Come on, girl. We were created uniquely different for a reason. And mm-hmm. that's something we need to get excited about people. Yes. Don't be ashamed of it. Mm-hmm. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed. I love that. Mm-hmm. Lakeisha, I would like to invite you to share a social media site where our audience can reach you. Can you share a site where the audience can come and, and, and learn more about your business? Absolutely. Um, the best is my website, which is www.asisterstruth.com. There you can check out, you know, my book, my course, yes. you know, coaching. And then you can also follow me on all other social media accounts from my website. And it's www.asisterstruth.com. I love that. Real quickly, I wanted to mention your book. Can you give us the title of your book? Sure. It's 31 Days of Truth, Manifest Your Passion, Power, and Perseverance. And this is a quick, easy to read book Mm -hmm. um, that's going to give you 31 Days of Hard Truth that's going to help you to dig deep inwardly so you can really face you know, so you can really face your truth. And I'm also sharing a lot of personal experiences as well. And I'm taking common everyday, you know, life struggles Mm -hmm. and giving you tips and tricks on how to turn those into triumphs. I love that, Lakeisha. Mm-hmm. Girl, you are on it. I am elated, family. I'm so elated to have participated in this show today. I know that someone was touched by this wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much to the Savvy Speaks podcast guest, the other queen of the round table, Lakeisha Woodard of A Sister's Truth, which teaches you how to discover, define, and live your truth where you can find out more about this powerhouse at www. I am Lisa Nobles.com. And as a bonus, please visit www.iamlisanobles.com slash resources.html where you can receive free podcast res- podcast resources for downloading the show today. I just want you to know, you know me, what I always love to say as we end the show. I love you. I truly do. And thank you for being a part of this episode today. It was fantastic out of sight. I was touching her information was very relatable and remember family you know my mantra as I always say you are a unique combination of experiences clothed in purpose strength and destiny I also want to leave you with the national domestic hotline at 1-800-799-7233 if you have any type of issues from uh, pedophilia or anything of that uh, woman abuse women abuse even sometime men, please contact them. I want to encourage you to have a wonderful uh, week and I'll see you right here next time on the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. Bye-bye and I love you for participating. Have a great day. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles online at imlisanobles.com and on Facebook and Instagram at EWOFP. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review and we'll catch you next time on Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. Activate, motivate, inspire.